Rub up your engines! That guy just bought this Lexus. It's in beautiful looking shape. He only paid 3,500 bucks for it. Now it does have over 300,000 miles on it. And it's got kind of a misfire. And he said his code reader didn't give anything. So we're gonna try to figure out what's wrong. Realize even though it's old, the paint's in immaculate shape. And you can see here, it's an IEA and it was made in Japan. Aside from the normal wear and tear, the leather seats are still in excellent shape. The interior's in phenomenal shape. Got decent tires. The trailer hitch is hooked up to it. Even the gold is still in pretty good shape. Now basically this is a fancy Land Cruiser, right? It's the Lexus version. These things can run forever with the phenomenal V8 engine. And yeah, it sounds smooth, listen to it. One of the best engines they ever made. The only downfall of this one, even though the check engine light is not, so we're gonna have to get the big scanner and look at some serious data. Now it's kind of hidden away on this. It's up here, black, so you can't really see it that well, but it's up here, right by your right leg. Now it's connected. So we'll do intelligent diagnosis. Just realize it's a 98, it's gonna take some time. The old cars have much slower communication than the newer ones. Gotta do it manually, so we'll go to Lexus. And I can really feel it jiggling now. Do a smart scan. Notice there's no check engine light on. The only thing's on is a brake light. And that's because I got the brake on. If I take it off, even that goes off. There's no lights on. Other than the warning light for the seatbelt, because I got the seatbelt off because I'm just sitting here analyzing. And you can see it's got a lot of mileage here. It's got 334,000 miles on it. Normally, you're not going to see too many problems with Lexus. The airbag system isn't working right. The tilt, ABS. But... What he cares about is, it's running weird. So we'll start with the ECM. Oxygen sensor, heater circuit, bank one, sensor one. Now that isn't gonna make it misfire. That is the heater. This is Tennessee, you don't need emissions testing every year. So if you live somewhere else, you would replace the oxygen sensor, bank one, sensor one, and the new heating element that's inside it would work and that code would go away. But it's gonna make it run any better. That's only for warming up the car. Once the car's warmed up, it's doing it. That's not the problem. Look at the ABS system. The analog brake system says it's got abnormally high positive voltage, some crazy stuff there. So we'll check the battery and alternator, make sure that's okay. But I don't think that's the problem. We'll look at the tilt system, telescopic motor for the tilt. That isn't gonna make it run weird either. Airbag system. SRS, open and driver squib circuit. That's for the airbag system. The airbags probably won't work, but that's not gonna make it misfire. We're gonna start by looking at absolute data. We're gonna read the data stream. No, this is an older Lexus in 98. We still got 107 points of data. So let's start looking at them. All color coded and most of them, they're going pretty good. Now here's the interesting thing. You can feel it kind of rumbling, but look at the misfire count. They're all zero. So it's not actually misfiring because none of them are showing a misfire. That's where what you feel can be numerous things say, oh, it's misfiring. It isn't running correctly, but it's technically not misfiring. There's no misfire codes. If this thing misfires, believe me, this thing's going to show you. It doesn't matter if it misfires once out of 10,000 tries. It'll show misfire one time. It would have number one and they're all zero. And it doesn't matter if we rev it up or if we put it in gear. That put a little strain on it. Nothing's misfiring. Now as we rev it up, the ignition advance is 18, but when we rev it up, it advances, so that's normal. The long-term fuel trim on bank one and two is almost perfect. It's only subtracting 0.03% for a car with 300 something thousand miles. That's kind of incredible that it's running that almost perfect almost at zero the map sensor is doing pretty good it's close to the liter of the engine it's a 4.7 liter engine it's 4.81 grams per second that's normal the oxygen sensor tests are complete now here we can see the short term fuel trim on cylinder number one it's subtracting 1.59 percent fuel not subtracting 3.9 number two is it subtracting so it's actually running a little bit rich not rich enough to trip a coat rich enough to make it jiggle a little because if it gets too much fuel it's not going to burn completely it's going to have incomplete combustion see it is moving around sometimes it's almost perfect sometimes it's subtracting 2.3 3.3 with all this age it could have dribbling injectors they might need replacing a lot of times cleaning will help and we'll look at the rest of the data there's nothing else that really shows a problem now it sounds so good but that little jiggle it would bother me too. This is almost a perfectly made vehicle and that little imperfection, it would drive me nuts too. 
So I'm gonna get some of Bernie's cleaner. This stuff's kind of amazing. They invented it to clean fuel injection systems. And it's as simple as dropping the stuff in and driving the car. It'd take forever if you're putting gallons in, but this is just a little bit, so it'll just go in even without a funnel. Just take your time. It actually smells nice, kind of a, an addictive smell. Doesn't stink like most cleaners. Now we'll take it for a spin. Now realize this thing sat for a year and a half. When a car sits for a year and a half, there's no saying the pinnels on the fuel injectors could have some carbon built up or the gasoline will actually congeal, turn into a gel. We'll see what happens. We're gonna take it on a highway, 70 miles an hour, half an hour, we'll see what happens. All right, we're at the end of a half hour drive, 45 minutes, and we'll see what the data says. It doesn't seem to shake as much. Now, it hasn't been that many miles, but it's definitely not jiggling as much. The fuel trim on bank two is now 0%. Trim on bank one is 0%. Long term, and the short term fuel trim is 0% on bank one, and only minus point 781 now it's zero on bank two too so that little bit of driving is definitely clearing things up the long term is zero and the short term is coming closer to zero than it was before i still drive at 250 miles but i mean hey and that short bit of driving it's made a big difference see it's zero for both then it subtracts just a little bit and then it goes back it's definitely getting a lot better there's zero zero point seven eight one it's much better than it was before so we know this thing sat for a year and a half he even showed me a picture of a mouse nest that was in the blower motor. He had to take it out and clean it because it was wobbling around. But this cleaner is fixing the problem. And this also goes to prove that people think their car is misfiring. Well, it's misfiring. It doesn't necessarily mean it is misfiring in a technical terms. As you saw, the machine showed zero misfires from all. But you could feel it not running right. Well, that's because it was getting probably blobs of fuel from dirty fuel injectors because it sat for a year and a half that we know of, maybe even longer. Who really knows the history of it? But just driving it for half an hour, 40 minutes with that cleaner has cleaned it out. It's running more efficiently now. If it would have been a simple misfire, which I thought maybe that's what it was before he brought it over, I would have seen misfire say cylinder number five. Then I would have taken a number five coil, put it on a number one, Number one on five, if the misfire moved, I knew the coil was bad. But that's not the case because it didn't actually have any misfires. It only had somewhat bad data on the fuel trims. Knowing that this thing sat for a long time, things will clog up inside. And plus it has 300 something thousand miles. The injectors probably are gonna be somewhat clogged up from all out years in this cleaner that Bernie makes, the ATS. It'll dissolve all that crap in a very short period of time, as you just saw. So 3,500 bucks for a vehicle like this, that looks like this, that runs like that, man, he got a deal. Yeah, it's got a lot of mileage, 300 something thousand miles. I've seen them with 500,000 miles on them and they're still running okay. If you can find something like this, hey, even if you don't really need it, why not buy it? You get tired of it? You can sell it to somebody else, probably make a little money. And here's some bonus questions and answers. JXU7 says, I wanna know, is CNG better than internal combustion engines? Are CNG cars less reliable than internal combustion? Found an 07 Civic, 155,000 miles of CNG for three grand. I'm based in LA, so I can get CNG. Well, if they were converted correctly, they actually can last longer. It's a pain getting a CNG, but if you live in LA and you stay there and not traveling all over the country, eh, why not? You know? And here's the reason they can run better. CNG is gas, right? It's already a gas. Now, an internal combustion engine that runs on gasoline has liquid gasoline, then it sprays it to try to make a mist that burns right. Well, guess what burns better? A gas. You have propane, CNG, whatever gas, it's already a gas. So they actually burn cleaner and pollute less and the engine doesn't have as much carbon deposits because it's a cleaner burn. If they're set up right now, I gotta set them up wrong and they're a piece of crap, they don't ever run right. But if a CNG vehicle is run correctly and set up right, it will actually outlast a gasoline engine. They just are more efficient at it. It's just a hassle to fill it up if you're traveling across country and stuff like that. A lot of people worry, what if I get in a wreck and the tank ruptures and I blow up? That's another danger that you won't have a gasoline car. Nifty Cent says, my car misfires when it rains. I got an LS V8. Whenever it rains, it misfires. It also makes a crackling sound. It's in the middle of the engine, right behind the firewall. All right, well, we hear that crackly sound. Probably got wiring connector problems. Wherever those wires are, there's always connectors. Disconnect the connectors. Look at them. 
If they're green, they're corroded and they're shorting out. Now, before you do anything, disconnect the battery so there's no power running. You unplug them, you see they're all green. Get spray electrical cleaner. That's the only thing you want to use. And you want to clean it all, spray it and soak it a little. And then get a toothbrush. And you can brush the green off. Keep spraying the electrical cleaner and cleaner. Snap them back together. And if it stops, that was a very simple fix. You got something when it gets wet. It's interfering with the electrical. And generally, you're saying the radio, because the radio doesn't use much power. The lower power ones are going to be affected more by rain. A big old 12 volt power, like starter or your car or something, a little water ain't going to hurt that. It's got tons of power. But the radio only uses a tiny amount of power. So any little corrosion is going to do that. And when it gets wet, and of course, also look for chafed wire. Sometimes they make the cars and the wiring gets rubbed and then you see the insulation's worn off. Then you're going to have to rewire that part where the insulation's broke. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.